I'm Sonia with Art Hash, and today I'm going to show you how to do resin on a painting. And um, basically, I'm going to create a trough, and we'll call it the Simone Trough since I invented it. And um, this is going to keep you from having major spillover and having to do sanding, and then having the resin on the side of the painting, which is something that I, I don't like the aesthetics of and I don't want to have to deal with. So basically, you've got your painting, it's done, it's clean, it's ready to um, put resin on. It absolutely needs to be 100% dry. And I use painter's tape and I start applying the tape to the side and have about a quarter of an inch, if that, across the top. Go around, make sure you're pretty even. Once you've rounded the corner, you're going to go across the other side. Come all the way up to the top and overlap your other piece. I like to overlap a good amount, probably about, probably about an inch or so on this side. Okay, so once your once your tape is in place, this is really important because basically the paint, uh, the tape is going to act as a barrier so that none of the um, none of the liquid falls out the side. You want to take a spoon or something like that and you want to run it along the edge of the tape. You want to keep doing that and you really want to make sure that it's close on the top. I like to sort of reinforce the top and run that around. You want to run it around all sides, do it two, three times, make sure it's tight because if it's not tight, that's where your drips are going to come in. Okay. So once you've got your tape on, you're ready to start measuring out your epoxy to go on the painting. Um, you also want to make sure your corners are on really tight because where the corners are that can create a drip, you want to make sure those are nice and tight in there. Okay, so we'll just put this to the side all right now. And I'm going to show you how to measure out your epoxy. Okay, as a disclaimer, um, I used to use epoxy a lot. It's very, very, very toxic. You want to really make sure that you have a mask on when you're using it. Um, you can get one of those sort of gas masks at the hardware store. I'm not going to use it so that I can tell you what I'm doing, but you don't want it to touch your skin. You want to be in a well-ventilated area. If you're planning on using epoxy, um, more than once, if you're going to use it a lot, you really, really should have a workspace that has a proper ventilation system for epoxy. Once you're ready to mix your two-part epoxy, make sure that you have your gloves on. If your mom works anywhere where she has access to any gloves, she can probably bring some gloves home for you. Anyway, so the epoxy that I'm going to use, since I don't have a very big painting, is this Envirotex. Um, high gloss finish and you can get this from Hobby Lobby now it used to be $16.99 a box but now it's $32.99 a box I don't know if everybody's just resining everything or what but the price has gone up you can get your $40 40% certificate off the internet take the coupon and go get that anyway so basically it's a two part polymer there's the hardener and then there's the resin and you want to have equal parts. Theoretically, you should probably measure the parts out, but I've done this so many times, I basically eyeball it. And I'm probably going to use about a third of the bottle for this piece. Okay, so first you pour in your resin, and you can see there's about a third of the bottle that's been poured. And then you're going to pour in your hardener. And you want to pour in the exact same amount 
of the hardener as you have of the resin. And basically I just slide them side by side. You can see that I need to pour a little bit more. It takes it a while to come down. I can already start smelling the fumes. I mean, it's it's not a it's not it's not good. Okay. So basically you've got both of those in there. I need to mix this for a solid two minutes. And you don't want to skip that two minutes because basically that's how these mix together and um, create that hardening effect and you want to make sure that it's thoroughly 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 mixed so that you don't have pockets where it's sticky and um, and things like that. Okay, once your resin has been mixed you want to mix it thoroughly for two minutes and I mean stirring it vigorously um, you're ready to pour. So, you're going to pour your resin on your painting, scraping all of it out with your gloves on and your mask. Okay, so once that's all good, put that to the side. I, I like to use um, playing cards, so if you have a deck of playing cards that you don't need anymore, you can use that. Um, First, I just tilt from one side to another and let the resin run. That takes care of covering the surface area pretty fast. Because this is a this is probably a 24 by 30 painting, so it's a little bit larger. Okay, so once we've sort of spread that out, you basically take this playing card and you use it like a squeegee and you move all of the resin to where it covers the entire painting. Go from one side to the next side. All the way over. Okay, here's for the fun part. Um, I use a torch. Basically, you can leave your painting, but if you leave your painting like this, all those bubbles that were in there from when you were mixing are basically going to create pox in your painting. And what that means is, is one, a lot of them will burst, but um, the ones that are stuck in there, they can create crat uh, craters inside your painting. Um, so basically, I just use a small torch that I picked up from a hardware store, and um, you run over your painting with the torch, and you can watch as all the bubbles start dissipating. You really need a couple of people for this, because if they could uh, tilt the painting your way while you're doing it, you'll be able to get more of those bubbles out. And um, this is actually really a really important step, but it's dangerous. This stuff is flammable. You want to make sure it doesn't get too close um, to your canvas. You never want that deep uh, blue part of the flame to be touching your canvas. The uh, paper on the side can catch on fire. So basically, be careful. Be careful, be careful, be careful. But besides using this, there are some heat guns. I've never used a heat gun. Um, the only other way is to exhale like blowing carbon dioxide on a painting and there's no way that you'll be able to do this size of a painting. Okay, so we've done the blow torch part and please for the love of God do not blow yourself up. Um, resin is a really hard medium to work with. It's toxic, like I said before. That's why I do not work with it anymore, um, just the toxicity alone. But if it's something that you are wanting to do, like James Rizzi, this is how you do it. Um, you could basically leave out the blowtorch part if you don't mind having a few little dimpling within your piece. Um, but basically, that's the process. And we're going to let this sit for about an hour, and once the hour is done, um, time yourself, an hour to an hour and a half, 
and we will take off the tape part. And once we take off the, once the hour is over and we take off the tape part of it, it's not going to drip to the side because it'll be basically tacky. And you'll have a clean, beautiful, resined piece with none of that gunk on the side, no need for sanding, um, with the Simone trough uh, method. Anyway, if you enjoyed that, please share it with your friends, and you can see more uh, about this and other techniques at www.arthash.com. Thank you. Okay, so now an hour and a half has passed, and we're going to take the tape off. Basically, you can pull the tape a little bit to the side, and you can see that it's not dripping, and that's when it's ready. So ours is not dripping. And you want to be real careful that you still have your gloves on. Peel all the tape off. Now you can see along the edge that we're all clean right here. No drips. The resin's not dripping. If you do see any drips, it's all just leftover paint. But the resin is not going to drip down. It's going to stick right on the top. And if you look at the front, it's finished. Okay. So basically now we're finished and you can let this piece dry overnight before you hang it. And if you need to ship it or um, send it somewhere, you basically need to let it dry for at least 48 hours. I probably would let it cure for about three days before I send it anywhere. But other than that, you're done. And I'm Sonia from Art Hash. You can see more at www.arthash.com.